Hi everyone, Blaine Tyler, Finding Sasquatch. Come to you again from Northeast Ontario. Okay, uh, sad news in the Bigfooting world. Um, May 28th, um, I think in Chilliwack, BC Hospital, we lost John Green. He passed on. Um, you know, I guess in some way, you know, we had to expect it at one time. He's 89 years old, but I mean, um, Mr. Green was uh, very instrumental in the Bigfooting world as for, I don't know, showing everybody or setting up the framework and the structure for investigating and documenting and keeping track and, you know, correlating report similarity of reports and what eyewitnesses have seen. Um, he interviewed all the big uh, encounters back in the day, in the glory day, a uh, golden age of uh, footing. Um, got a letter and he was in conversation or, um, with William Rowe, uh, communication with him, thanks for mail. He interviewed Osterman, the abduction. He went to obviously to Bluff Creek a um, bunch of times, uh, following up before and after. Roger got his footage there. Um, he interviewed Fred Beck after the Ape Canyon attack. I mean, this guy was huge to the Bigfooting world. Uh, no, he did all, he um, did all those very important investigations and set up a uh, structure for what everybody else should do afterwards. He was a non-believer skeptic turned knower. And, and uh, he's got a lot of books on the subject, uh, at least four or five. And one book, uh, I guess they call, we call uh, like the Bible or whatever, of Bigfooting is the Apes Among Us. Now, um, coincident thing or a uh, uh, funny thing, um, about a week ago, f three days after, I didn't know uh, he passed away, but three days after, I was at a camera shop and, um, you know, I was inquiring about lenses and I just started talking about footing and, and I don't mind dropping the Bigfoot bomb, I don't care. But anyway, um, I brought it up, the fact that I did that, and then, oh, wants to get a picture? Well, I got pictures of him, right? So, so, from behind the counter, this elderly guy comes out, who's a retired journalist. He interviewed John Green when he made his uh, rounds through Ontario, and when he was promoting the Apes Among Us book. Now, that's so cool, and he was talking about how he um, got to compare his foot to, I think, probably a, one of the Patterson cast copies. Um... Or maybe a, another one from BC, maybe when um, the Ruby Creek uh, prints or something like that, uh, right after the, he went there. So how cool is that? And then um, within the same week, this week, uh, the news flash on um, social media that John Green has died um, May 28th in a Chilliwack, BC hospital. Uh, really sad. I mean... Um, Okay, so um, here's the Chapman cabin. Um, Mr. Green visited the site more than once. Uh, in the next video, I think is his second trip there after the initial investigation. In '56, there had been several such reported sightings, which had been reported in small local newspapers. Mr. John Green, publisher of a newspaper at Harrison Hot Springs, British Columbia, began investigating some of these sightings. Here is John Green to report on a sighting he investigated in 1957. When I first came here in about 1957, it was still pretty well open. But all this has, has grown up since then. So uh, what happened at that time was that uh, Mrs. George Chapman, who lived in a house down by the river behind me here, uh, she was in the house and the children were outside one of them came in and told her that there was a cow coming out of the woods. So she looked out and she saw this man-like thing, but uh, about eight feet tall and completely covered with hair like a bear. And uh, she knew it to be a Sasquatch. Uh, this was you know, quite a well-known thing to the Indian people. And she was frightened, so she took the children, ran down to the river, and then through the graveyard, which is right behind me here and uh, came out just about here onto the track and then uh, ran on down to Ruby Creek. Now, uh, 
she'd really only had one quick look at the thing. So uh, it wouldn't be that convincing a story, except that a lot of people immediately went back there and saw these enormous tracks. Uh, Mr. Tifting, of course, was one of them and uh, can describe uh, just what the tracks were like and what they did. Well, they came through the bush into the shed or the lean-to of the house. And there was a bottle of dried fish or smoked salmon rather. And he broke the bowl, and there was some fish eaten there and thrown around. And then he went down the river bank and apparently took a drink and then come back up on the other side of the house through the garden patch and up to CPR fence and step with one foot on that side of fence and one foot on that side of fence. I can walk right over it. And the footprint was about 18 inches, like. And then he went across there and over to the next fence there and went right up the hillside. And that's as far as we could follow it, see. That was an old clip. Um, the audio's off a little bit there. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, the next clip is a track and hunting party investigation that bluff before Roger got his footage. Okay, so uh, I think that's a uh, Bertram guy. Uh, it's hard to tell. I'm not sure if that's green or not. Doesn't look like green, but anyway, uh, a group of them, including De Hendon, Green. Uh, went to Laird Road near Bluff Creek, uh, Fresh Prince. The one on the right's real, the one on the left's a hoax. Um, not going to get into it, but the construction guy's brother put a bunch of hoax prints in there to throw off the hunter, hunters, investigators, and to keep the men working. That's all they cared about was uh, getting their job done. They didn't care about these uh, unique species of humanoid biped uh, messing up uh, messing around with their equipment <laughs> anyway um, pretty cool this is all before um, Roger got his footage um, early October maybe late September um, cool thing about this is when these guys were leaving that's when Roger Roger showed up and he was there for like a month and a couple weeks into his trip uh, Bob Gimlin showed up and then they hung around for a couple weeks and in the closing days they got their footage but uh, so there's Mr. Green looking at roadside tracks um, I think that could be DeHinden filming him or the other guy that was just walking on the road um, pretty important I mean uh, and this is I guess the hunting party, white ladies there, they were trying to track down the Sasquatch and um, without getting into it too much. You can't do that. I mean, it's, an, it's next to impossible. I mean, now we're aware of their stealth abilities. They weren't then. I guess they thought they could run them down like a, some bears or something. I don't know. But uh, these guys did the legwork to get their footage to get their reports and they deserve all the fame they got I mean a lot of people are jealous of their of people who get footage well there's a lot of work that goes into it but anyway um look, there's Mr. Green there looking at prints uh I guess that's where one of the equipment was moving around um anyway pretty awesome old footage but very valuable to the community, Bigfoot community. Right, so here's the Pacific Northwest Expedition, a Tom Slick funded group. Uh, DeHinden in the middle there, uh, John Green on the right, and Bob Tankless was in there. Uh, might be him on the left. Anyway, pretty important, late 50s, early 60s, um, first group of its kind in North America. Before this, everybody was over in Nepal after evidence of the Yeti. Anyway, pretty cool. Um, 
Here's John Green interviewing Albert Osterman. Uh, he came forward in 1924 about his abduction from uh, the Toby, Toby Inlet, Inlet in BC. Um, awesome uh, encounter. Uh, but here's Fred Beck from the Ape Canyon encounter. Um, John Green interviewed him too. He's back at Ruby Creek. Um, here's John Green with all his cast from all over. Now you gotta remember that he drove all over the country to get his information. He just didn't fill up his books with newspaper clippings. It was journalism, skeptic journalism of a phenomena that needed to be studied. And uh, here he is obviously with Bob Gimlin. And uh, okay, so the Apes Among Us is basically like the Bible for Sasquatch 101. Um, everybody else just had kind of magazine style kind of books and his was journalism investigation and cataloging and events and um, these are his other books that are also important. Uh, he showed us all how to put structure in our investigation, uh, how to interview witnesses. He drove to investigate, he didn't just sit at home and uh, put information together or steal reports and fill his books. But, this is my favorite picture of him, um, doing what I do, what everybody else does when they find prints, casting and waiting for hours for them to dry, to collect the evidence in the hot sun, being bitten by bugs or pelted by rain. It takes a lot of dedication to do this, and uh, he deserves all the fame that he got. Anyway, he's going to be missed. And uh, this is John joking about having to cut a tree on uh, near Bluff Creek Road and uh, there might be Sasquatches in the bush watching them. 